Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. Other, the other question I kind of had around regenerative agriculture, I'm curious of what has changed, if anything, that was an interesting point uh, that I think Joel Salatin had shared with me, but it was uh, just the technology behind it, because historically, you know, regenerative agriculture is essentially almost going back in time versus some new concept. It's like kind of working with the systems that, you know, kind of nature provides versus trying to have these, these inputs that are kind of one dimensional uh, and ultimately lead to things like soil depletion and things like that. But uh, one thing that, that I think uh, Joel was sharing with me was like, there's, you know, you have these things like kind of where you interject the, the automation into something that otherwise would have been heavily manpowered things as simple as like, like you, what you mentioned before, like having your, your chicken coop get kind of rotated around is, are you seeing breakthroughs in that at the moment in terms of how, like how a rancher or a farmer can implement more technology and make this process a little easier to do versus maybe like, like amplifying their, their, their ranch hand numbers in order to make this sort of thing happen? You know, that's a great question, Zach. Um, where I see the technology really kind of escalating in the, in the regenerative spaces is in the data collection. Um, so, so much of the regenerative argument prior to even the last couple of years was kind of hypothetical. It's like, well, we know this is how Mother Nature did it. We know this is the end result, but we didn't really have the quantifiable data to say, well, this is how much carbon we're sequestering. This is how, you know, this is the improvement in water infiltration or soil microbes or any of that. So I, I think really where the bulk of the technology is focused on right now is understanding those baseline metrics. So then we can start to craft technological implementations to see improvements in those. Um, and, and that's really the exciting part, right? Now we know, you could see an, an, anecdotally what happened in like the Chihuahua Desert with Alejandro based off of, you know, Kiss the Ground and what he was able to do. You can see what some of, you know, what, what Alan was able to do in Africa with some of those grasslands. We can see it, but then, you know, there is an element of society that wants to know, like, what's the concrete data? And then they want to be able to compartmentalize it as like, this regen beef is the same as taking, you know, X number of cars off the road. We're, we're sometimes we're a simple people and that's good because that data becomes the, the movement in, in, you know, the, that becomes the, the catalyst for a movement. Um, now we do see a lot more of those, chi- you know, like the mobile chicken farms or chicken coops. Right. So those are some really cool pieces. And, you know, really when you think about chickens, how poorly they're managed, you know, every chicken, spends its life on an eight and a half by 11 in an 11 cage. That's a piece of paper. And, and, you know, when we think about like this chicken's whole life is designed to produce eggs for us in that confined space, you know? Um, So these mobile chicken farms are great. It's, you know, it's all about animal husbandry as well. And that's the regenerative movement is how are we providing the best natural life for our animals? Um, Knowing full well that they are an integral part of the food supply chain or the food chain. So I, I am excited to see what we come up with in the technological space in the future. But right now, it's really utilizing that tech to develop data sets that, that quantify how important and how essential regenerative agriculture is. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter.